talking a little bit about what we've been up to. But first, the industry. Let's start with these folks. Uh, Yazali Studio at Canon Design. What you're seeing on the upper left is a building trying to find the least solar incidents. On the lower right, two apartment blocks trying to maximize favorable views uh, to raise the rents on future tenants. Um, so what you're seeing here is a couple of scripts that are iterating uh, recursively to try to find the best solution for a given goal. We see this a fair amount in the industry. We do not see it um, commercially much until recently, and we'll talk a little about that. If the clicker works. There we go. Uh, HKS uh, out of the US, Texas. So this is a facade trying to use daylighting analysis to find a good Hoover configuration to balance solar incidents and daylighting. Uh, our friends at Building SP, auto routing inside Revit models. This has now been released as a uh, set of Dynamo nodes that you can start putting in your own scripting. If you're, if you're noticing a theme here, it's all about applying generative computation to real building problems. <coughs> Museum of the Future, Burrow Happel, really interesting example here. Um, you know, this sort of kind of working out forms in the Rhino and then using Dynamo to bring the resulting structure into Revit. About three years ago, this would be one of the things that we would say, like, look how exciting this is. This is certainly exciting, but it's not as interesting as what they were really doing with it, which is actually trying to optimize the structure with these outcomes. So we're looking at a higher performing structure that's cheaper to build and closer to the designer's intent. So in all ways, in this sense, better. So you can see this kind of developing trend of being kind of goal-oriented toward the uh, ends of the project and using technology to try to reach that end. Another project from Borough Hattel, a uh, development project in the city center. And look how they start. They start talking about what they're trying to get to with the project. This idea of permeability, visibility, comfort, accessibility. Doing options. Look how radically different these are. And of course, this is how design works. You work through a bunch of options, you reach something that is more optimal. Uh, but what's interesting is that they are producing these computational. Doing studies like this, place making and visibility to the external urban fabric, and looking at their retail eyeball rating to see for their future tenants, for the client, how well the retail might um, work along with, the, along with the local city. And so these are all customer slides that I've just gone through, these Borough Happel slides. This is how they talk about their practice, real-time modeling and analysis, optioneering, making thousands of options, and then interactive exploration. Um, I love this slide because this is what we've been talking in, about in Autodesk for the last few years, about where we think the industry is actually going. And you know, truth to tell, this is how design has always worked. Uh, one of the things I've been saying in Autodesk lately is, let's not talk about how you know, design is going to really change and technology is bringing this new thing. That's not, that's not what's happening at all. Design's been the same for thousands of years, right? We've, as long as we have made things, we have made them in this way. What's different now is the technological environment might actually be able to support that completely where it hasn't really been able to before. What we've mostly supported up until recently has been documenting decisions that have already been made by other means. Now we're gonna be able to start supporting the actual decision-making process in a much more clear and broad way. A lot of what you're seeing has been the province of firms that have um, invested deeply 
into this kind of research and have used it as competitive advantage. And as often happens, you know, those kinds of things get developed professionally and in academia, they gradually become widespread notions. Um, a good analogy is what happened between AutoCAD and Revit. And, you know, until Revit came along, nobody understood that drawing coordination was a computational problem. Before Revit, everybody just imagined that that was a human problem to make all the drawings agree. So now we're looking at there are design problems that can be approached with the aid of generative techniques and computation that were once solely the province of humans, but now are going to be the province of augmented practice. So this is what we think is possible in the future, to go from goals and constraints in a project and arrive at form. You've seen examples of this going by already that are happening in the industry, either directly supported by Autodesk or other tools on the market. But the interesting thing about it is the trend, that everyone's understanding now that with a lot more computation and the cloud has raised the capabilities enormously, that we can actually apply computation to problems that before were solely reliant on professional expertise. So doing things like this, producing multiple options for a building shell based on just a few parameters, filtering and sorting on those parameters, clicking through some of the possibilities, and then actually by hand starting to alter it to other options, the more you like it. Um, I'm so happy I get to say this. There's a class on this tomorrow morning at 9 that I'm teaching. If you want to see the director of Autodesk actually use real software live uh, on the web, uh, please go. Uh, other examples, such as about building shells. If my clicker works, there we go. Some of you know that uh, we've been uh, working with Perkins and Will uh, in the United States on healthcare planning, and uh, we actually had someone in their office for about eight months working with their healthcare planners to essentially download their expertise into a Dynamo script and then put it into an optioneering environment called Project Fractal, which is what the class is on tomorrow. Another example on uh, configuring a, a building facade. Working on a configuration of window to wall ratio and shading percentages on this. Again, manipulating it, getting it to a desirable outcome. Again, we are just you know, this is, I, I hesitate even to say that we're scratching the surface on this stuff because, you know, I look at this and I know where we can go, and this is kind of the, just the beginning. What you're seeing here is essentially the embodiment of dozens and dozens of academic theses. Um, if you get this far, people are generally happy to hand you a doctorate. Um, it would be great if people didn't have to go through that whole cycle to get to this point, and they could actually further explore their, their ideas on the basis of a widely available infrastructure. This is the beginning of that. So this is where we're going. We're trying to combine scripting, analysis, optioneering, and form making in a future environment. And I'll tell you when I'm not allowed to say stuff like that. But um, this is, you can see that everyone's trying to do it already through multiple tools. So we really think this is where the AEC industry is going. If you want to know more, thebuildinglab.info or come to the class tomorrow. Thanks, folks. Great pleasure to be here.